Cunningham is the full package. I see Luka Doncic. Jalen Green is a player I have been waiting my entire life to watch. Who is the cop? T-Mac Kobe. I mean, he is a walking bucket. So experts are calling this the best draft class since 2003. This is one of the deepest, most talented drafts. Since 2003. Mm -hmm. Since 2003. These guys are not friends. Oh, he took his ankles there, knocked down the three. Oh, he got a little bit of smoke. They've been rivals since high school AAU days. So when you see Jalen Green barking at him, like that's deep-seated. Green soars to the rim. That's years of him coming after Cade Cunningham. Um, I must have been super big. They started at draft night when I got drafted number two. How much do you relish opportunities like this? I feel like I'm made for those moments. We have seen the greatest draft class in recent NBA history give us the best player in recent NBA history as the 2003 draft class with stars such as LeBron James, Dwayne Wade, Chris Bosh, and Carmelo Anthony not only changed the course of NBA history, but also gave us the latest true competitor to Michael Jeffrey Jordan's throne in LeBron James. And as it stands right now, internationally, Luka Doncic has emerged as a true young superstar. He has forced his way into the young GOAT conversation due to his tremendous and overwhelming success. But meanwhile, in terms of the next great American superstar, the battle has just truly begun. Zion Williamson, LaMelo Ball, Anthony Edwards, Cade Cunningham, Jalen Green, Evan Mobley, Scotty Barnes. Who is the next American NBA superstar? Well, if history is about to repeat itself, we should look no further than this hyped up and living up to the hype 2021 draft class and at least for this video we're focusing on the top two picks because i think the battle for the next true american superstar really is a battle it is a personal fight because right now kate cunningham and jalen green i don't think they like each other in fact I think they are a part of perhaps the best NBA rivalry that absolutely no one is talking about, or at least perhaps talking about enough. What's up guys, Mike here. And it seems to me that people have already forgotten that last summer, Cade Cunningham versus Jalen Green was the rivalry that everyone was talking about. Their number one versus number two pick matchup packed the house. And it was Jalen Green who pulled ahead on this night, both on the scoreboard as the Rockets won and individually on the stat sheet with an impressive 25 points. Although I will certainly say that Kate had his own moments. Cunningham staring down Green, the number two pick. Oh, he took his ankles there and knocked down the three. Oh, he got a little bit of smoke. I will also give Cade credit where credit is due because Cade also won in the regular season, and that is when Cade Cunningham said this. When asked about handling trash talk, Cade said, it depends on what they're saying. I'll talk too. Nothing that I heard tonight held any weight. It was all for the cameras, which again, I do not believe at all. This was not all for the cameras because rewinding a bit after that summer league game, a victorious Jalen would declare yet again. My tip been super big. It started at draft night when I got drafted number two. I felt like I was number one. I gotta keep the tip on my shoulder from where I'm from. But before we continue, guys, I want to give a huge shout out to a friend of this channel, NBA Top Shot. I am personally all in on Top Shot. NBA Top Shot is the officially licensed NFT of the NBA, which means it is the best way to show off your fandom. And I'm gonna show you personally in the form of moments from the 2022 NBA champion, Golden State Warriors. In terms of my own collection, let's go to my moments we are going to look for that championship badge and it's not going to be hard to find it because i will say i went and got the legendary moments for steph draymond andrew wiggins and clay thompson for the 2022 nba finals i just want to show you the steph one right away so as you can see right there yeah and that is clean but that is more clean. The camera. I gotta say, I personally love these cameras to see NBA Top Shot already using them, to see them in highlights already. It's absolutely incredible. And just think what they're going to be able to do with these highlights heading forward into the future. In terms of the Golden State Warriors in general, as you can see, I have quite a few of their moments. And we're actually going backwards in time here because here is Andrew Wiggins. I have number two out of 400. I love it. Here's Andrew Wiggins dunk from the Then There Were Four series. This is the Western Conference Finals. I think you might know what dunk this is um sorry luca i love you you're the baby goat 
You had to get out of the way on this one. Heading to a number one moment. One of my favorite moments, possibly my favorite moment, to be honest. Here we have Clay Thompson in the game recognized game series three. This is a three pointer from February 3rd, 2022. Now on this three pointer, Clay reaches 20th on the all time leaderboard. And in the process, he mentions that he passes his idol, Kobe Bryant. Personally, I love this moment. Again, I think it is my favorite moment because it does have Clay and Kobe. And also it was great to see Clay just back on the court after his injury. If you sign up for Top Shot today, the best way to get started is to get Get yourself a starter pack. You can pull a moment of a superstar like Steph or LeBron or a rookie like Cade or Evan Mobley for just $9. That is just $9. And if you didn't pull your favorite player from your starter pack, you can head on over to the marketplace and start collecting your favorite players there. I've been collecting a lot. You can look at my collection right now. It is Mike Rosemba. I will say it. I believe in NBA Top Shot 100%. And if you use my link to sign up and purchase that $9 starter pack, Top Shot will give you $20 back to go to that marketplace to start collecting your favorite players. Trust me guys when I say I believe in Top Shot. Again, thank you to Top Shot for sponsoring today's video. For now, let's get back into today's video. So what exactly is happening here? Well, Jalen Green and Kate Cunningham have a real rare true rivalry. They're not just number one and number two draft picks. Remember this clip from the intro? These guys are not friends. They've been rivals since high school AAU days. So when you see Jalen Green barking at him, like that's deep seated. That's years of him coming after Cade Cunningham. There is way more to this Cade versus Jalen rivalry, trust me. Although already at the NBA level, both Cade and Jalen have shown that they are tremendous talents. As looking at Cade's stats a little deeper, we find that throughout the history of the NBA, only five players have ever averaged at least 17 points, five assists, and five rebounds per game in their rookie seasons. Magic, LeBron, Luka, Tyreek Evans, and Cade Cunningham. Every single one of these players before Cade who has not been afflicted by the curse of the Sacramento Kings, has been a generational talent, but also, more importantly, these three players, Magic, LeBron, and Luka, are three tall superstars who are actual draft comparisons for Cade Cunningham. I would actually say Tyreek Evans would be a draft comparison as well. Again, though, Sacramento Kings got him. Meanwhile, for Jalen Green, after a slower start to the season that saw him average just 13 points per game on 30% shooting in the month of January, a month where the Rockets played 14 games, Games. After the All-Star break, Jalen Green was nothing short of a rookie sensation. In six of his last seven games, Jalen would score at least 30 points. And in the final game of his rookie season against an Atlanta Hawks team that needed a win for playoff seeding, Jalen Green attacked the basket with incredible force and efficiency, wrapping up the year with a career high 41 point statement. This was the most points scored by a Houston Rocket rookie since the best player in their franchise history, Hakeem Olajuwon. But more impressive to me personally is that in the last 24 games that Jalen Green played in after the all-star break again in those 24 games that were actually incredibly competitive because of the nba's new play-in system for the playoffs jalen averaged 22.1 points per game while also shooting 48 percent from the field and 39 percent from three efficient numbers for a rookie guard for sure and also historically great numbers as well to put it simply 19 year olds are not supposed to average 22 points per game during an nba season in fact throughout nba history only one 19 year old ever zion Williamson, according to basketball reference, has averaged at least 22 points per game. And then looking at 20 year olds, it is there where we do have a list of seven players that I think we can all agree are all very elite. Jalen Green, as a 19 year old in the final 24 games of his rookie season, would stand among these names, which means next season at the age of 20. I think we're about to see something very special. Actually, I don't just think that. Let's use Jalen's words here, who also sums up his rookie season best with what if you weren't cut? yourself for this rookie year. Then I'm a bookie. Now I have a question for you. At the end of the day, every rivalry of course has a winner and a loser. And so out of this budding rivalry between Cade Cunningham and Jalen Green, who do you believe in more? Do you believe in the number one pick who wasn't always the number one pick? In fact, I'm sure Cade Cunningham remembers the time in his life back in June of 2017 when he was ranked only 23rd in his recruiting class as there was a different name at number one, but the same name at number two. Despite Despite this though, Cade did rise to the number one spot as Monverde, Cade's high school team his senior season, is regarded as one of the best high school basketball teams of all time. And that is a statement, I know, but Monverde had the number one pick in the 2021 draft in Cade Cunningham, the NBA's latest rookie of the year in Scotty Barnes, NBA champion and lottery pick Moses Moody, and also a fourth first round pick in Dayron Sharp, which means yes, 
This high school team had four of the 2021 drafts first round picks. This high school team also went 25 and 0 against the toughest schedule in America and destroyed teams by an average win margin of 39 points per game. They were so good that Cade often sat out entire fourth quarters because even against the best schedule in America, they were ahead by so much. And it's here where I have to say, maybe this is where the misconception comes from. Maybe it's the fact that Cade only plays 22 minutes in a blowout win that he doesn't pad his stats that have some people mistaken because at one point in his life Cade's six foot ten giant of a brother Cannon told him if you can turn into a point guard just think about how much longer you'll be able to play and so that's what he did basketball brings an adrenaline rush that I didn't get when I was playing football or anything else I don't know where I'd be without basketball. Who said that again? Was that the guy that everyone says is too quiet? The guy that some are already saying doesn't have the killer instinct to be a number one pick? This is the message that I want to send to all college kids out there. When they looked at Cade Cunningham, they said that there were times that he could have been more aggressive. I just want to make sure everybody understands this. If you play 30 games a year and anyone ever questions your motor, that's a huge bad mm -hmm. sign. You can't ever come across like there's an absence of energy. I mean, listen to this nonsense. Questioning Cade's motor? Let's go back to Cade's origin story and really see if questioning his motor and need to succeed is warranted. Cade Cunningham was born with a chip on his shoulder the size of his father, who was a prized football recruit for Texas Tech, until a freak ceiling fan accident caused him to cut his arm and never throw a football the same way again, thus ending Cade's father's pro career dreams. Cade was certainly born into a family of athletic greatness. However, it's not Cade's family that makes him so great. As we've already talked about in this video, Cade does have a six foot ten brother in Cannon, and Cannon had a respectable Division One basketball career, but he was not a draft pick. He is not currently playing in the NBA. Cade's need to be great comes from within himself. And as you can see, at one point in time, Cade was not the number one pick. He was not the number one recruit in his class. He was number 12. The thing is though, he would go out and prove that he deserved to be number one. He put his head down and got to work. In the 2017 Basketball Men's World Cup, Team USA had been taken down by Team Canada as RJ Barrett annihilated the poor Americans with a 38 point Maple Jordan light performance. Or maybe he's the real Maple Jordan. We'll See. On Team USA though, for the 2019 USA Men's World Cup, America was out for revenge and they reloaded with all five of the future top five picks of the 2021 NBA Draft. Yes, this roster had Cade, Jalen, Evan Mobley, Scotty Barnes, and Jalen Suggs, as well as multiple college players, including soon to be sophomore Tyrese Halliburton. And so while their in real life rivalry was very much still in play here, of course, for the time being, Cade and Jalen needed to put aside their differences differences and get to work. They needed to bring their country back a gold medal, and that's what they did. Jalen was the youngest on this team, while Cade was the star. Jalen would be the fourth leading scorer on this team, and the United States would win all seven of the games they played in, including the finals, of course. But again, it was Cade Cunningham who showed everyone that he was a true future superstar. In the finals, Cade showed that he can and will get the job done on the game's biggest stage, as at the time, this game was the biggest stage possible for him. And as you could see here, with under five minutes left, this was still an eight point game when Cade Cunningham took the ball into his hands and he closed the door. He scored twice, he assisted once, and then he wrapped things up with a dunk and a 21 point, seven rebound and seven assist stat line. Yes, the United States had done the impossible. They had won the basketball gold medal. This was certainly a big deal though, as again, Cade was only a high school senior playing with college players, but also so was Jalen Green and let's just say that after this Team USA experience, Jalen was not happy to watch Cade rise up to the number one spot right past him by January of 2020. As when we look back to where this rivalry begins, we find that in September of 2017, Jalen Green was ranked the number two player in his class by 247 Sports. And then for just a brief moment of time in March of 2018, Jalen was victoriously the number one recruit in the class of 2021, but by the end of his career, his high school career. He was number two again, this time to Cade Cunningham. And I think we can all agree 
believe that we would not want to be number two for that amount of time. September of 2017, all the way to the 2021 NBA draft? That is a long time, which is why Jalen Green himself publicly declared to the world after the NBA draft that the Pistons had just made a huge mistake and it was the Houston Rockets who were the real winners of the draft lottery. And the thing is, if we do look back at that high school rivalry, we can certainly see why Jalen Green would think that. As now, we are not on Team USA, but instead only a few months earlier at the Peach Jam. After their junior seasons, Jalen and Cade Cunningham were not teammates, but they were opponents in the quarterfinals of this tournament looking to prove who was really number one. And it was here where in this head-to-head -head matchup, the score is tied headed into the second half where we find evidence of why I really believe in these guys. Because in this heated and competitive game in the third quarter, all we find are Cade and Jalen making the right pass time and time again. But in the fourth quarter, their play styles are in full display. Because we can watch here after an aggressive Jalen move to the basket, freeze frame, and look who is talking. Then fast forward a bit, another basket, and Jalen is talking. He's also playing defense with a clear desire to win. Love to see it, even if he's getting kind of dunked on. Also love to see Cade versus Jalen, and with Cade guarding him. Jalen does this. <laughs> The trash talk is definitely there, so is this air ball, and after Jalen iced this game, you can see why he believes he is the number one guy. Because not only on this night did Jalen take it to Cade and pull out a win, but also Jalen would proceed to show off in the semifinals of the Peach Jam while taking down a Cam Thomas-led Boo Williams team, and then in the finals, Jalen would again come up huge when his team needed him the most. Team Why Not was down by as many as 15 in the first half. Jalen Green, the number three player in the ESPN 100. Here he is. Ask you the steal on the wild pass. The lob. Oh, look out. Jalen Green, hello. Here's Green with the spin. Off the glass. He ties it up with three tenths to go. Only the end result was not ideal. Bradford guarding the inbound. Burnett triggering in. The lob. Green. Just short. This one is over. Mokan proves it is elite again. I think we all had that Michael Jordan poster in our classroom though at one point where it says he missed more than 9,000 shots. He lost almost 300 games and also he missed 26 game winners. To me at the high school level especially, I love to see that Jalen has the confidence to put the responsibility of the entire game on his shoulders when his team needs him the most. That is why despite their horrible season, the Houston Rockets have been so quietly confident in Jalen as a future superstar. As reports have stated that within the Rockets, there has never never been a doubt that Green is someone the organization can build around for years to come. The end of his rookie season only cemented that claim. So who do you have? Cade Cunningham, Jalen Green, or someone else from the 2021 NBA draft class? How about Evan Mobley, Scotty Barnes, Jalen Suggs? You may have noticed that on every single one of these lists, those three players have basically been a part of those lists of this story and of these clips. And I'll be honest right now, I'd love to talk more about this draft class. And also, I'd love to talk about the best top fives in a draft class of all time. Because when ranking draft classes, there are lists of the best draft classes ever. But what is the best top top five in a draft class ever. Because right now it somehow looks like 2021's only real competition, if they do end up competing for that GOAT spot, are the 2003 and 1984 draft classes. I know that's a big statement, I know. But if you're interested in my explanation for why I think that, just comment down below and I've got you. I will make that video. Thank you guys so much for supporting. If you're not already subscribed, it would be awesome if you did subscribe. We have a lot of incredible ideas in store. I think you guys are really gonna love the content and I think you guys are really gonna love of what else we have in store. We have a secret project coming. If you're already subscribed, thank you so much for supporting. You're awesome. We all know it. And as always, have an awesome day, guys, and cue that music. Jalen Green has the basketball IQ of a baby hamster. <laughs> Damn. If you're still here while the music is cued, here are two videos I think you are definitely going to enjoy. I mean, personally, I think the one on the left might be more your style, but the one on the right looks pretty awesome too. Click one, let me know what you think. And again, have an awesome day.